Geometry students, great. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to take notes. You're going to take them on your own OneNote page, some review. Now, here's the part I would do. I would not write every single detail you see here on the screen, but I want you to write some of the key things on there. It's a lot of the stuff that you're going to see me write afterwards. Um, maybe write yourself little notes, whatever. And that's what today's homework is going to be. You are going to just turn in your completed notes today and then tomorrow. And I'm going to give you the review sheet for today. And you can start working on the test review sheet, but it's not due until block day. So that should give you guys plenty of time in the next several days um, in order to do this. So let's get started, my friends. Um, let me put this in tablet mode and then I'm going to expand the page so we can keep recording. Okay, so here's going to be the basic gist of the test. You are going to be given at least five to six different shapes and you are going to have to find the lateral area, surface area, and volume of all of these shapes. So the rules don't change when you're working with this. So we're going to first do it for three of the shapes and then we're going to talk about the other two shapes formulas. But right now you are supposed to find the right triangular prism. Now, this was a big struggle for a lot of you. A lot of you are like, well, I don't know what the base is. Well, the prism's named by the base. It's a triangular prism. So that means my base polygon is a right triangle. And so I'm going to label that on there. So with this, um, we have to go ahead and solve for its perimeter, right? Because we're doing a, pr a prism and we know lateral area is perimeter of the base times the height. Surface area is perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the area of the base. So let's go through and let's make sure we do this. Now, it's a 15, 20, and I'm going to tell you right now that's a 25 centimeter hypotenuse. This is done by the Pythagorean theorem. It is a 3, 4, 5 multiple. But if not, you could have just used the Pythagorean theorem and solved, okay? But here's the thing. I'm just keeping it easy. It's a triple. But if not, I would have called that x and I would have just gone 15 squared plus 20 squared equals x squared and solved. x ends up being 25. So what is the perimeter for this base? Well, it's 15 plus 20 plus 25 and I get that to be 60. All right, you're also supposed to solve for the area of the base. We use that for volume and we need to know it for surface area. Well, the area of the base is going to be base times height all over 2. Notice I didn't say capital B here. It's the base of the triangle. So with right triangles, we know the legs can act as the base and the height. So we're just going to go 15 times 20 all over 2, and we get that to be 150 square centimeters, perimeter centimeters, and now we just plug in the values. So lateral area, it's the perimeter of the base, which is 60. The height of the prism, which is going to be 10, and that gives us 600 square centimeters. Now our surface area, I'm just going to write it over a little bit more. Well, actually we could just write below, so it's a little less space here is your lateral area plus two times the area of the base because a prism has two bases. So we put the lateral area in and then we plug in our value for the area of the base which is 150. And we get 600 plus 300 equals 900 square centimeters. Now here's the thing. Make sure you know how to do an equilateral triangle for a base. Hint, hint of the day. And then we have volume, which is just the area of the base times the height. Well, the area of the base is 150. The height of the prism is 10. And that's going to give us 1,500 cubic centimeters. So the key thing with the prisms, remember, is always to draw your base, solving for the perimeter and the area of the bases. Okay. Now, I'll tell you right now, you will have a hexagonal prism that you are going to have to work with, but we are going to use an example now of using a hexa hexagonal pyramid instead. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to do the regular hexagonal pyramid. So remember formulas for pyramid. We know lateral area is one-half perimeter of the base times slant height. 
And then we know surface area is one half perimeter of the base um, times slant plus the area of our regular polygon base. And then volume is area of the base times the height all over three. Okay, my friends, so let's do what you're supposed to do for a pyramid and a prism. You always redraw the base. So we have our hexagon, and when we have our hexagons, we always redraw the central angle triangle. Okay, so they tell us the base edge is eight. Oh, I think they said meters here, so eight meters. Yes, I know it's my handwriting, but I stole this from another book. All right, so it bisects that. We know that's four. You should know now by central angle is 60 degrees, and so the apothem bisects it. And then we're going to be able to quickly solve for the apothem, which is going to be four root three. Okay, what are the things we need to solve with the base? Well, we need to know the perimeter of the base. Well, that's going to be six times eight, which is 48 square meters. We have to find the area of the base. And yes, you must, I need everyone to hear me, you must write down the formula. If you don't write down the formula, I can't give you credit for that formula. So we get here apothem times perimeter all over two. Our apothem is four root three. Our perimeter is 48 all over two. I get 96 root three um, is going to be the area of our base. So let's go ahead and calculate lateral area and surface area with this. So one half the perimeter of the base, which is 48, our slant height. By the way, that means your slant height is right here, right, my friends? That's our L, is 12. So one half of 48 times 12, that's going to give us 288 square meters. Surface area is just our lateral area plus the area of the base. Realize they're not like terms, so you cannot combine them. Now, we're going to go on, and we have to find volume. But I want you to notice something's missing. We do not know the height of this prism. And really, remember, the height of the prism goes from the vertex smack dab to the center. And it's perpendicular. So we need to remember that our apotha, our slant height, and the height always form a right triangle. So remember, we found the apothem to be 4 root 3. We know the slant height is 12. Can't we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for what's missing? And the answer is, yeah. So our height squared plus 4 root 3 squared equals our slant height squared, which is 12 squared. Height squared plus we have 16 times 3 would be 48 um, equals 144. Height squared is going to be 96 Plus or minus the square of 96, our height, my friends, is going to end up being 4 root 6. So now we have everything we need to, in order to simplify for the volume. We have the area of the base, which was 96 root 3. We have the height, which we calculate to be 4 root 6 all over 3. And that simplifies if we multiply the coefficients out in front of the radicals and the radicals together. Um, 384 root 18 all over 3. And yes, I want this in simplest form. So I'm going to keep this easy on you guys. What's the square root of 18 simplified down to? That's right, 3 root 2. Notice the 3's go away. So my volume is 384 root 2. And that's it cubic meters. Okay, so I'm flying through these because I don't want to take a lot of your time, but you can pause. Like I said, here I would have just drawn the base. I would have drawn the whole thing. All right, a right cone. Now, cone formula, if you don't use the right formula, it's going to be wrong. I saw several of you use the surf, um, cylinder formulas instead, but let's do a quick review. Lateral area for a cone is pi times the radius times the slant height. Surface area is pi times the radius times the slant height plus the area of the base, which is pi r squared. And we know the volume is just pi r squared times the height all over 3. So guys, notice what's missing. We don't know the height. Well, here's the cool thing. If we draw it in, it bisects the diameter, makes that 3, and we are given, voila, a 3, 4, 5 triple. And then you just have to plug it in. And we're going to leave it in, sim in terms of pi, so in simplest form. So we got pi times 3 times 5, 
that gives me 15 pi square inches. And then we use that 15 pi and we go plus, we got pi, our radius is three squared. So 15 pi plus nine pi is gonna be 24 pi squared inches. And guys, I'm gonna move this over so I have a little more space to work directly below it. Um, because I wanna stop being selected there. Oops, here we go. And so we plug in what we know. We know pi, our radius ends up being three squared. Our height is four all over three. And that simplifies down, my friends, until 12 pi cubic inches. Um, make sure you know the right triangle relationship here with cones. That's very helpful. Um, here's a hint for pyramids. Make sure you know the difference between a lateral edge doesn't equal the slant height. And there are several problems on this. I think this was 10 5 a the lesson, I would look over, make sure you know. I'd also correct it on the quiz. Okay, quick review on the formulas for spheres and for cylinders. So remember for spheres, we don't have a lateral area formula. We only have a surface area formula, and it's 4 pi r squared, and that's the radius of the sphere. And then our volume for a sphere is just 4 pi r cubed all over 3. Okay, and then our cylinders. We have our lateral area, and remember our lateral area is just that lateral surface. And this is for a right cylinder, remember. So it's two pi r times the height. Remember two pi r is circumference, which acts as the perimeter. Our surface area is two pi r times the height plus two pi r squared. Remember that pi r squared is the base of that cylinder, so that's why we use pi r squared for it. And then volume is the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height. And it's not over 3 because it doesn't go to a point. So those are like the main new formulas that you guys had to have memorized. All right, my friends, um, I hope these are helpful for you. It was a good review. Um, I will have a Zoom meeting tomorrow afternoon if you have more questions after you've been working on the review. Um, guys, study. You can do the best. It can really help your grades.